What's up, Taiwan? I'm Yvonne Yang with 10 minutes of news from here in Taiwan and around the world. President Tsai Ing-wen met with a delegation of UK lawmakers on Monday. The lawmakers are members of pro-Taiwan caucus in British Parliament. They were in Taiwan on a six-day trip. During the meeting, Tsai wished the UK success in its bid to join the CPTPP regional free trade bloc. She asked the UK to back Taiwan's bid to join the bloc, in turn once it secures membership. Former President Ma Ying-jeou has announced he will visit China later this month. His trip will mark the first instance that one of Taiwan's former presidents has made the journey across the strait in over 70 years. Eric Gao has the details. A historic announcement. Former President Ma Ying-jeou's foundation says Ma is heading to China. He'll be there from March 27th to April 7th. It'll be the first time that a former leader of Taiwan has been to China since 1949. A spokesperson for Ma says the trip will help ease tensions between the two sides. This isn't Ma's first groundbreaking trip. In 2015, during his second term, Ma met with China's leader Xi Jinping in Singapore. It was the first meeting of leaders from the two sides since 1945. But he's not expected to meet with Xi this time. His itinerary will take him to places like Nanjing and Shanghai, but not Beijing. It's still unknown whether he will meet with any Chinese officials. However, the ruling Democratic Progressive Party is urging Ma not to let his visit be used by Beijing for propaganda purposes. The trip comes as tensions between Beijing and Washington are escalating. There are concerns that Ma's visit could send the wrong message to the U.S. about Taiwan's position. But Ma's foundation says the trip is mostly about cultural and historic exchanges and that Ma wants to use this trip to educate Taiwan's young people about the country's past ties with China. People in Taiwan and the U.S. will be closely watching Ma's trip to see whether it is just for cultural exchanges or if it turns out to be slightly more political than that. Alex Chen, Sam Hui, and Eric Gao for Taiwan Plus. Chinese leader Xi Jinping plans to meet with Russian President Vladimir Putin in Moscow on Monday. It will be Xi's first trip to Russia since the country invaded Ukraine last year and is aimed at promoting bilateral ties between the two countries. The trip is scheduled to last two days. According to a statement from Beijing, the visit will be a journey of friendship, cooperation and peace. China has been trying to position itself as a neutral party following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. But in the past, China has repeated Russian propaganda, such as accusing NATO and the United States of provoking Moscow into taking action. For more on what to expect from the meeting between the Russian and Chinese leaders, our reporter Jaime Ocon spoke to Matthew Sexex, a security analyst with the Griffith Asian Institute based in Sydney, Australia. Can you talk about the significance of this trip? Yeah, look, it's uh, very significant that she is going to Moscow to, uh, to visit Putin on a number of levels. The first level, I think, is to, I guess, send a note of reassurance to the government in Russia um, that Beijing continues to provide, you know, a degree of, of support for, for Russia's position, if not the actual invasion of Ukraine, um, then Russia's position vis-a-vis -vis NATO, vis-a-vis -vis the United States, uh, and, and so on. So Beijing has quite consistently provided that rhetorical support to uh, the Kremlin. Um, and the question is now whether or not that translates into something a little bit more formal and a bit more material. There have been some uh, reports over about the last 48 hours that China has been engaged in uh, sending body armour uh, and even small arms to, uh, to Russia. Now, that's probably not the game changer that uh, many would think about. Um, when they look at whether China is, is abandoning the sort of straddle diplomacy between the West and Russia, 
Uh, but nonetheless, I think it's a, it's a fairly significant development. What is Beijing trying to accomplish with this trip? Is it trying to take steps towards brokering a peace deal between Russia and Ukraine? It depends very much as to uh, how far she is prepared to go um, in uh, propping up Putin and propping up this, this frankly, failing war, uh, which will, will be, I think, a test of the robustness of, of the sort of no-limits partnership between Moscow and Beijing. I think Beijing very much wants to sell its 12-point its peace plan, um, and, and that basically has carrots and sticks for all sides. Um, it's got you know, sticks for Russia with the expectation from China that nuclear weapons won't be used, that uh, you know, uh, nuclear power plants will be kept safe, uh, but also you know, having a, a stab at the United States by saying the formation of blocks is unhealthy, sanctions should be wound back and, and, and so forth. Uh, so you know, at the very least, this is a document from Beijing to cement uh, Russia's control over large portions of, of Ukraine. So now that's what's going on behind the scenes. Um, in terms of the optics of it, I think Beijing is probably looking to, to kickstart a little bit of international enthusiasm um, in its peace plan because it was you know, received in a decidedly lukewarm way. What does this say that China's President Xi Jinping is going to visit an indicted war criminal? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, an objective assessment on whether, you know, China should get more heavily involved in the war on Ukraine and, you know, by, by for instance, arming Russia, an objective assessment would say that's not in Beijing's interests. But Xi Jinping has cultivated this sort of personal relationship with, with Vladimir Putin uh, and seems to be placing a fair bit of store by it seems to think that, you know, uh, very much the, the alignment between um, China and Russia, at least on the, the, the core broad goals of resisting what they see as American hegemony, uh, resisting block politics, NATO expansion and so forth, um, you know, that, that's something worth uh, making a lot of noise about and, uh, and he continues to do so. Um, so I don't think that we necessarily um, should look through the, the, the prism of our own interests and the way that we would go about um, these types of relationships when, uh, when looking at what she actually wants to get out of the partnership. That was Matthew Sussex, a security analyst with the Griffith Asian Institute, speaking to our reporter, Jaime Ocon. A group of reservists were called up for training on Monday morning. While reservist training is nothing new in Taiwan, there were a few changes to the program that made this call-up special. Over 500 reservists in northern Taiwan's Yilan County reported to field sites rather than the military bases to begin their training. That's to help expedite mobilization of reserve forces during wartime. The change comes as Taiwan overhauls its reserve deployment system. The trainees will also drill alongside career military personnel, which is the first for this kind of program. The water level in central Taiwan's Samun Lake has dropped 3.5 meters in two weeks, as a month long drought shows no signs of easing. It's another sign of the country's ongoing water shortage which could become Taiwan's worst drought in more than 75 years. The lack of rainfall is being linked to La Nina, a weather phenomenon that has brought lower temperatures to the Pacific west of South America and more extreme ones to Taiwan. This could make cycles of prolonged drought and extreme flooding more frequent in the future. Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. Remember to download the Taiwan Plus app for more stories from Taiwan and around the world. Finally, today we'll leave you with images of baby emus at Taipei Zoo. I'm Yvonne Yang. Take care and see you next time.